A lot of important lessons have been learned from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Unfortunately for China, all these lessons may have put a real damper on their future plans. It's no secret that China wants Taiwan. They continuously claim the island isn't a sovereign nation but part of the People's Republic of China. The United States and much of the rest of the world, including Taiwan, disagree with China's claims. When Putin invaded Ukraine, the Western world and the United States in particular kept a close eye on China to ensure that Xi Jinping didn't have similar ambitions as Vladimir Putin. Now that we're a year into this war, it's highly unlikely that Xi Jinping would do something as stupid as waging a war against Taiwan. Currently, there's only one brutal authoritarian leader who's dumb enough to invade a neighbor, and it's not going great for him. That being said, China has been keeping a close eye on the events unfolding in Ukraine and globally, and with each day that passes, Chinese leadership sees any future plans of seizing Taiwan slowly slipping away. So let's dive right in. Why has Putin's invasion become a disaster for China's future plans? Let's look at each lesson learned from the war thus far and how they all spell bad news for China. The tactic China is currently using against Taiwan is called Gray Zone Operations. At a very basic level, Gray Zone Operations are non-military conflicts and confrontations by one nation, normally a more powerful one, against another nation. This tactic is used to weaken a country's resolve and hinder its ability to grow and create allies. But the key is none of the tactics cause military engagements or directly lead to war. China has been using this strategy in the Taiwan Strait for decades now, getting its name from the gray area between peace and a full-scale invasion. Along with gray zone operations, China is using another tactic against Taiwan called salami slicing. This is when a nation uses a series of many small actions to eventually achieve a much bigger outcome. The key here is that what the nation really wants to achieve is too difficult or illegal to do all at once, which is why it needs to be broken up into smaller steps. For example, China has slowly increased the number of times they've crossed into Taiwan's air defense identification zone until it's become the status quo. They next begin crossing the Taiwan Strait median line with aircraft and naval vessels. They've also been slowly deploying military forces on small islands and even creating artificial islands in the South China Sea. China continuously warns Western leaders against making close ties with Taiwan or visiting the island to restrict international diplomatic relations as well. And of course, China has used its economic might and influence in the region to put pressure on Taiwan's economy and politics. If these things all happened simultaneously, then the argument could be made that China was being too aggressive or preparing to seize control of Taiwan. However, these actions spread out over time allows the world to forget, while the culmination of gray zone tactics could eventually set the stage for China to officially incorporate the island nation into its territory. The crazy part is, this is all eerily similar to what Russia did just before invading Ukraine. Vladimir Putin used gray zone tactics in a variety of ways during his first invasion of Ukraine in 2014, and then again just before the full-scale invasion in February 2022. In 2014, when Russia sent in little green men, who were later discovered to be a band of mercenaries known as the Wagner Group, Putin claimed he had no idea who they were. This plausible deniability was a gray zone tactic, albeit one that comes very close to being a military conflict. But the use of gray zone techniques, along with Russian posturing and the West wanting to keep the Russo-Ukrainian war from escalating any further, allowed Russia to annex Crimea. It's important to note that although Russia was using gray zone operations, war eventually erupted, which is something that China has undoubtedly made note of. However, before this happened, the West responded to the aggressive gray zone operations by Russia in a measured manner. This is exactly what China expects the response to be in their gray zone tactics in the Taiwan Strait. They can continually harass and weaken Taiwan, and it's very unlikely the United States or anyone else will send military aid as they would not want to be seen as the aggressors. What China can expect is economic, political, and diplomatic pressure, which it has dealt with for decades and doesn't seem to be worried about. But now, here we are in the year 2023. Russia is in a brutal war with Ukraine, and China can only shake its head at the utter failure of its allies' invasion. When Russia switched from gray zone tactics to full-on invasion in 2022, China watched closely to see what NATO's response would be. This way, they could learn what to do and what not to do if they ever decided to invade Taiwan. We don't know, and probably will never know if China had any plans to invade the island nation in the near future, but if they did, Putin's failing war is likely acting as a deterrent for China to switch from its current gray zone strategy to a more aggressive approach. Let's look at how the world reacted to Russia's invasion of its neighbor and the lessons learned. Putin's invasion has been highly informative for the Chinese leadership. Unfortunately for them, the way the world reacted to Russia's invasion was likely not what they were hoping for. Lesson 1. China learned that size doesn't always matter. 
China has the largest navy in the world in terms of pure numbers. However, as China and everyone else has learned from the war in Ukraine, having a lot of equipment and soldiers does not necessarily mean you will win a war. One thing is glaringly obvious when China looks at its battle plans to invade Taiwan. They'll need to launch some type of amphibious assault onto the island if they hope to take it by force. When Russia rolled tanks and infantry into Ukraine, it was relatively easy due to the fact that the countries are right next to each other, and Ukraine doesn't really have natural defense features. For China, the Strait of Taiwan poses a huge logistical problem. It's generally agreed that an amphibious assault is much more difficult than a land-based one. In order to reach Taiwan, China's forces need to cross around 100 miles of water. That is 100 miles that Taiwan can unleash aircraft, missiles, and bombs to annihilate huge numbers of Chinese soldiers and vessels. Taiwan would fire artillery shells and anti-ship missiles to decimate the invasion force. When China looks back at how Ukraine was able to repel a massive land-based invasion, this probably gives them pause. Also, Russia lost the Moskva, the flagship of the Black Sea Fleet, in the early months of the war to what many suspect was a Ukrainian anti-ship missile, so it's clear that these projectiles would pose a huge threat to China's incoming invasion fleet. There's also the fact that Taiwan is an island, and its main defenses are designed to destroy naval vessels, which means they're likely to have a large stock pile of anti-ship missiles at their disposal. So China has learned from Russia's failure that their superior numbers might not be enough to invade and hold Taiwan. If Ukrainian resistance collapsed due to the sheer magnitude of Russia's invasion force, it would have been one thing. But that's not what happened, which is bad news for a Chinese invasion if they thought the Taiwanese people would just give up because China has a much bigger military. Lesson 2. Russian soldiers showed China that training makes all the difference. When analyzing why Russian troops are faring so badly in Ukraine, China must realize that Ukrainian troops are much better trained than their Russian counterparts. This, along with better communication and tactics by those in command, has allowed Ukraine's far inferior numbers to decimate Russian forces. Upon closer inspection, China and the rest of the world find that many Ukrainian soldiers were trained through the United States National Guard State Partnership Program. Since 1993, the Ukrainian armed forces have been trained using the U.S. model of delivering mission-type orders and empowering Ukrainian soldiers to make in-the-moment decisions on the battlefield. The U.S. National Guard trainers use realistic combat exercises to help hone the skills and wartime decision-making of the Ukrainian military personnel. This has made an enormous difference in the war and allowed the Ukrainian military to be much more effective than the Russians. The bad news for China is that Taiwan joined this same program in 2022, which means every day that goes by, their military is receiving the best training in the world, which will only make an invasion of the island much more difficult in the future. Lesson 3. China has learned that just because nations are far away doesn't mean they'll stay out of the conflict. There's no doubt that China is the most powerful nation in East Asia. In fact, they're much more influential than Russia could ever hope to be in Eastern Europe. However, China knows from the war in Ukraine that Western nations half a planet away will still come to the aid of a country that they deem important. Ukraine is not a part of NATO, but NATO nations are sending billions of dollars in military equipment and aid. Case in point, the United States, which is on the other side of the Atlantic, has sent more military aid to Ukraine than any other country. What this means for China is that even though the U.S. is separated from Taiwan by the Pacific Ocean, it will almost certainly send military and humanitarian aid if China invades. Although the United States will likely do more than that, due to the fact that when President Joe Biden was asked if the United States would fight along Taiwan in a conflict, he gave a resounding yes. So by watching the United States send more aid than any other country to Ukraine, China saw their hopes for an ambivalent U.S. in a conflict with Taiwan become more of a dream than a realistic scenario. If the United States is willing to send billions of dollars, high-tech weapons, and state-of-the-art tanks to Ukraine to help them defeat Putin, there is little doubt they would offer the same type of assistance to Taiwan. The difference is that in a China-Taiwan conflict, the president has made it clear the U.S. would take a much more active role. Lesson 4. NATO has learned what works and what doesn't when a country like Russia or China threatens to invade. When Russia began mobilizing troops and sending its military toward Ukrainian borders, China watched what the response by the West would be. It's probable that, like the West, China knew what was coming next. The United States warned that the military exercises Russia was carrying out were just cover for an invasion, and Poland had been screaming at the rest of Europe to prepare for an imminent war for years. However, the response by the West during the weeks before the war broke out was what interested China the most. As more and more Russian troops were sent to the border, the West threatened to enact economic sanctions. China took note of this and likely was relieved at the response for their own future endeavors. Russia's plan, and a possible initial plan for China, was to invade, win the war quickly, and incorporate 
integrate the vast resources and manpower of the invaded territory into their own economy. Yes, the sanctions would be painful at first, but once the war was over and Russia controlled Ukraine, a reduction in sanctions could be negotiated, and there would be an eventual boost to Russia's economy from the acquisition of Ukraine's territory. China would desire a similar outcome in Taiwan. Sure, there would be some repercussions from the initial invasion, but after swiftly taking Taiwan, they'd be able to negotiate the sanctions away. However, this is not what happened in Putin's war. Russian forces failed to capture Kyiv, and one year later, the war continues to rage, with Russia on the losing side. This is incredibly bad news for China for two reasons. The first is because they didn't get to see the scenario they'd hoped for play out, and therefore couldn't be sure how long the economic sanctions would last if they won a war with Taiwan. The second was that since the threat of sanctions didn't stop the invasion, and when the sanctions were enacted they didn't cause the economic turmoil the West had hoped for, it's possible that in any future conflict the West's response to an invasion may be very different. Make no mistake, the economic sanctions put on Russia have slowly begun to cripple its economy and they will have long-lasting and very painful repercussions for the nation. However, they did not work as quickly as the West thought they would. Now NATO is believed to be taking a new approach. Rather than deterring a foreign aggressor through sanctions, they're moving toward deterrence through denial. This is a disaster for China, as they would much rather have taken on the sanctions than the second option. NATO now realizes that the threat of sanctions is not an adequate deterrent to stop a powerful nation from invading its neighbor, especially if there is a ruthless dictator at the helm. Their new plan seems to be to deploy troops to a region before things go too far to act as an additional deterrent against invasion. Let's take Taiwan, for instance. If intel suggests that China is mobilizing an invasion force, the United States and its allies might have just threatened economic sanctions in the past. However, due to Russia invading Ukraine, even when the West made this threat, the new plan could be to send NATO forces on a training mission, or create some type of joint task force made up of Taiwanese and U.S. soldiers. If China invaded and U.S. troops were caught in the crossfire, it could result in the West claiming China had attacked them, allowing NATO to enter the war on Taiwan's side. This tactic could act as a more powerful deterrent than just threatening sanctions, as the last thing China wants to fight is a war they cannot win against the West. In Europe, deterrence by denial is currently being implemented by sending entire battalions of NATO troops to the borders between allied nations and Russia. This buildup of troops forces Putin to think twice before trying to expand Russian borders any further. The same would be true if the West built up its military numbers around Taiwan. If troops from any NATO country are stationed on the island or near it, China will need to think very carefully about its decision to invade. It would be all too easy for NATO forces to get caught in the crossfire and bring the rest of the alliance into the conflict. The viability of this tactic becomes a little murky since Taiwan is not part of NATO itself, but due to Russia's actions, it's unlikely the West would solely threaten economic sanctions against China to deter them from invading the island. Instead, China needs to now live with the reality that the West is willing to go much further to stop an invasion than it did with Ukraine. Lesson 5. Sanctions are slow, but they do work, and China is very much aware of this. When Russia invaded Ukraine, economic sanctions were enacted. G7 nations froze around $350 billion in Russian assets almost immediately. This surprised even Putin, as he didn't believe the West was willing to escalate things so quickly. However, it's now clear that even if economic sanctions don't work as a deterrent, they will still be used as punishment if China ever decides to invade Taiwan. As Russia is currently finding and China is closely observing, the sanctions will cause turmoil down the road. Russia can no longer get many of the parts and resources it needs to continue resupplying its military. Their monetary reserves are quickly running dry, and their economy is suffering more and more with each day as the war continues. The sanctions took close to a year to show results, but it's happening. China knows firsthand how crippling sanctions can be as Russia pleads with them for aid. It might make Chinese leadership wonder if invading Taiwan will be worth the economic consequences for the country if the Russian economy completely collapses. The world is a global economy, and although China plays a huge role in it, it still needs goods and resources from other nations, including the West. On top of that, one of the largest aspects of the Chinese economy is its ability to manufacture goods for foreign countries and sell them in foreign markets. Two of the largest markets for China are the United States and the European Union. If they were to enact sanctions and freeze buying Chinese goods because of an invasion of Taiwan, the Chinese economy could crumble much quicker than Russia's. By watching what's happening to the Russian economy, China knows that sanctions would mean a sharp decline in foreign investments, decreased availability of key technologies, and a decline in exports. If the sanctions were short-lived, China might be able to weather the storm. But every indication coming out of Russia is that the West is willing to sustain harsh sanctions even at a great cost to their own economies. It's just another disastrous lesson that China has learned from Putin's war in Ukraine. Lesson 6. 
The invasion of Ukraine and the ensuing conflict has caused NATO to keep a closer eye on authoritarian governments, especially China's. It was not clear just how far Putin was willing to go before the invasion. He did a lot of posturing and made a lot of threats, but it was nothing new for the Russian dictator. In the weeks leading up to the invasion, it became clear that Putin would go all the way. This was initially a shock for many leaders around the world, but learning from their mistakes, NATO likely won't be taking authoritarian threats as lightly anymore. This has set up a less than optimal scenario for China. The gray zone tactics it's been getting away with for decades now might be taken more seriously by the West, all because Vladimir Putin took things too far. If Putin had never invaded Ukraine, China might have been able to continue using its gray zone operations to weasel its way into having more leverage over Taiwan. However, now the West will be watching every move they make, which is the opposite of what China wants if it's planning to eventually take Taiwan. The invasion of Ukraine was also a wake-up call to the United States and the rest of NATO. Ever since the collapse of the Soviet Union, NATO has enjoyed being strong enough that it was highly unlikely anyone would threaten their interests. However, this false sense of security is part of the reason why Russia was able to mobilize forces and invade Ukraine. For too long, the United States was ambiguous about how far they were willing to go to protect certain nations. The US had the most powerful military in the world. There's no denying that it's the backbone of NATO. But if the United States needed to fight alone, it could defeat any other country due to its sheer size and capabilities of its military. Both Russia and China are unable to keep up with the modernization of their militaries in the same way the US does. This means that the US has an edge in any conflict. After the invasion of Ukraine, the US realized that other nations might have forgotten how powerful its military actually is. US leaders had assumed that it no longer needed to explicitly state which nations it was willing to support and send aid to. However, Vladimir Putin made it clear that he was willing to invade a country even if it did have close ties to the US. This has opened the eyes of the US government, and they're now taking a much more active approach of drawing red lines and making explicit statements about which part of the world they are not just willing to support but will fight for. Unfortunately for China, the United States has made it clear that Taiwan is one of those places. If Putin hadn't invaded Ukraine, NATO might have continued to coast and allow China to exert influence over Taiwan until its invasion plans came to fruition. Now there's very little chance the US will allow Chinese gray zone tactics to continue to the same extent as before. The US will most certainly be keeping a close eye on China from now on to ensure it doesn't mobilize any type of invasion force, and if it does, there will almost certainly be a military response by the US and its allies. Lesson 7. If an invasion goes wrong, power and influence go with it. If Russia had been able to quickly take Ukraine, dismantle its government, and incorporate its people into its territory, it would have been very bad news for the West. NATO and its allies would have needed to contend with the fact that Russia was a powerful adversary and that its military capabilities were as strong as Putin claimed it to be. But that's not what happened, and now the world knows that Russia is nowhere near as powerful as Putin made it out to be. An invasion is a great way to turn the world against you. A failed invasion is a great way to turn the world against you and lose any respect and power you once had. Putin's war has shown Russia's weaknesses. Even neutral nations have turned their backs on Russia and no longer fear Putin the same way they had before the invasion of Ukraine. Russia has been called out for its war crimes, lost control of the narrative they were trying to create, and allowed NATO to become more unified and emboldened. All of these things resulted from the failed invasion of Ukraine. China now has to wonder if the risk of invading Taiwan is worth the reward. The Chinese government desperately wants to control Taiwan, and even though it claims the island is part of its territory, the fact that Taiwan has its own government and does not answer to the authoritarian leaders of China paints a very different picture. If China were to launch an invasion to incorporate Taiwan under its control and fail, it could cause China's power and influence in East Asia to become greatly diminished. China's worked hard to make sure it's the most dominant country in its part of the world, and to be fair, they have succeeded. Nations like Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan all have close ties to the West, but no matter who you are in East Asia, you rely on China in some form or another. If China invaded Taiwan and a drawn-out war commenced, it might cause their influence to decrease in the region, while countries like Japan, South Korea, and Australia become more influential. Seeing this very scenario unfold in Russia might give China pause when planning for the future and what they should do with Taiwan. Lesson 8. Just because a country is a major power does not mean the world can't live without them. When Russia threatened to cut off energy supplies to Europe, there was panic. Russia sold a massive amount of natural gas to northern Europe and controlled a large oil supply as well. 
When Western nations decided to reduce their purchasing of Russian fossil fuels and put a cap on how much they would spend, the Russian economy suffered. They continued to sell resources to other nations, such as India and China, but at a reduced price, lowering their profits. Needless to say, just because Russia controlled a huge amount of energy resources that Europe relied on didn't stop them from decreasing their dependence on Russia and finding other ways to fuel their homes, businesses, and infrastructure. This means that even though China controls a lot of resources in East Asia and provides goods globally, the world won't adjust or just do without them. China probably hoped to see the West cave in and give in to Russian demands, or at at the very least, Europe would find they couldn't survive without Russian resources. But neither of those things happened. It would likely be a similar story with Chinese goods if they invaded Taiwan. Reducing reliance on China might be painful at first, and the global economy would certainly suffer, but it could be done. So why is Putin's invasion of Ukraine such a disaster for China? Because of the eight lessons we've just discussed. The failed invasion of Ukraine is a warning to China that the world is a different place than just a year ago. Everything China has learned, NATO has learned as well. Any mobilization by Chinese military to invade Taiwan would likely be met with much more resistance than Russia faced. The United States will probably be more aggressive in its response, and even though China is a powerful nation, it does not mean that they will be able to stand against the combined might of the West. If things had gone differently in Ukraine and Russia had been successful in the early days of the war, China might have looked at the invasion of Taiwan more optimistically. However, Putin's disastrous war is a bad omen for any plans China once had of taking Taiwan by force. Now watch China's plan to take over the world, or check out how the US will respond if China invades Taiwan.